Hey everyone, it's your girl Courtney Chavante back with another resin tutorial. Thank you so much for visiting my page again. If it's your first time, welcome. Today we are going to be working on this blinged out initial wall decor letter. So I want to make sure that you guys do hit that subscribe button for me and also hit that notification bell so that way you don't miss any videos or any tutorials that I put out moving forward. What we're going to start with is we're going to just go ahead and put some regular basic white acrylic paint onto the front of our initial letter. I'm choosing a C because of course my name is Courtney Shibante and that starts with the C. So that's the letter I chose for this particular tutorial but of course you can use any letter that your heart desires. I am just making sure that I put on a nice um, coat on here. I'm making sure that it's nice and even. Um, I'm not trying to be overly perfect with it either just because it's not really going to be seen. It's really just a primer coat because you don't want the base of it to be brown. This just helps our colors to pop the way that we want them to pop later. So after we get this smoothed on we're just going to let it chill for a bit and let it dry. Um, and then after, you know, we let that dry, we're going to move forward to the next step. Alright, so after that has had a chance to dry, I'm just going to be taking this matte finish acrylic sealing spray. It's just a nice little clear acrylic coat. Um, I'm just going to be spraying this on the back of my letter. Now I'm going to be spraying this on the back of my letter because it's going to um, make sure it just kind of seals everything in. The wood is kind of porous and this is just going to make sure that we're able to really work with it later and prevent some troubles and it's going to really prep us for our next step as well. So after you put a nice little clear layer, it doesn't have to be thick, we're just going to let that dry completely. It takes maybe 30 minutes or so. After that has a chance to completely dry, we are going to be taking our liquid latex. Um, I poured this into just like this cute little medicine cup here. Um, I poured it maybe about 20 milliliters, but I didn't even need that much. I took my paintbrush and I'm just putting on a nice thick layer on top of that acrylic um, spray that we put down earlier. Now you don't want to put this latex on top of the wood directly because it can seep into the wood and it may not pull off later where we need it to because this isn't going to be something that's on here permanently. So we're just going to, um, yeah, like I said, make sure that we put a nice even coat, um, a nice thick even coat on the back of this and then we're just going to let this dry completely as well. All right, so after that has had a chance to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to be taking our E6000 glue and we're going to be getting our pearl trim. First, you're going to prep that E6000 glue and you're just going to make a nice little squiggly randomized trail going down the middle of that letter in a squiggly pattern from one end to the other. Um, you don't want to break it apart. Um, you want it to be nice and smooth, so just let it flow how it decides to flow. From there, you are going to place that pearl trim directly on top. Place it as you go. No need to cut ahead of time so that way you can make sure you cut it to the amount that you need and you know you don't have any excess left over that's just going to the waste unnecessarily. 
after that gets to the end from there that's when you want to clip at that little part that's at the end and then everything should be staying down nice the e6000 does dry pretty quickly so from there you're just going to let that sit and let it dry completely press it down really firmly as well you want to make sure that it's not loose All right, so after in about an hour or so, we are going to be preparing our colored resin that we are going to be using. So the first color that I'm going to be starting with is purple. So I chose to use a purple mica powder. I am using that purple mica powder and I am adding some resin into that. Um, I added about half of the resin that I prepared into the cup. And from there, I'm just making sure I get whipped up really nicely, making sure that it's distributed um, and the bubbles are like, you know, being released. I'm adding in some alcohol ink, some opaque alcohol ink and some regular alcohol ink just to make sure I get it nice and dark and get it to the hue that I want it. Um, so that way it pops and it's not all super see-through because that's um, just not the look that I'm going for with this. Not that there's anything wrong with that. From here, you see me mixing up my um, glitter um, and preparing my glitter. This is the mix that I made. I'm going to be stirring that in there. And of course, you know, you see me do this on numerous videos. I just decide that, you know, this is not enough glitter for me. So what I do is I go ahead and I grab some more of that glitter that I used to make that mix with. I'm just popping that on in there so I can get it thicker because I'm going for a really 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 thick consistency with this glitter and that's my goal here all right after I got more of my glitter added in and everything from here you're going to see me just go ahead and mix that on up all right make sure you release all the bubbles because that glitter can hold some bubbles so I'm just switching frames I had to adjust my camera and everything but I'm starting with that glitter mix and I'm just pouring on one side of that pearl trim and I am trying to move quickly as I can I'm pouring more so towards the middle because it's going to seep out towards the edge and I'm just trying to you know kind of work with gravity if you will I'm taking my um, other color my darker purple solid color and then I'm going on the other side of that pearl trim and I'm just making sure that I add that in on that side before that um, glitter mix has a chance to seep through I really want to make sure that I give this dark purple you know a fighting chance to be in its correct spot so we're getting that put on in there and from here you're just going to see me kind of alternate back and forth between my cups and everything making sure I got everything filled in exactly how I want it. Now with this particular craft um, you are going to have some spillage. It's completely fine. Um, you should expect it to spill over onto the sides and everything. That's why we made a little bit of resin in excess. Um, just because we want to make sure that we do have enough to account for that. So as you see it's going over onto the side but that's completely fine. I'm just making sure that there aren't any white marks and there's no white spaces that are left over that need to be covered. So just make sure that's completely covered and you will be good to go. All right, so now it's time for the fun part. What I'm doing here is I'm just 
preparing that gold foil and I'm going to go ahead and stick it onto this purple part right here. So I'm sticking it onto these purple pieces and I'm just adding it in where I see fit. It's completely randomized. Now as I was going, I decided that it wasn't just sticking well enough on its own. So I went and got my trusty dusty Mod Podge. And we're going to use that to make sure that this foil stays in place before we put that next coat of resin on. So what you're seeing me do here is you're using, I'm using my um, silicone brush and I I am just like kind of and some tweezers I'm just kind of kind of manipulating those a bit so that way I can add these gold flakes and get them where I want them they are a bit stubborn so you are going to have to work fast and it's okay because you know this is supposed to be randomized anyway so they're not going to be placed exactly how you think they're going to be placed in your mind just kind of go with it have fun with it so I'm moving around my C, making sure that I'm not missing any spots and whatnot. I'm trying to cover up as much as these pink parts as well that have seeped over into um, that dark purple area. Just to help camouflage that a bit too. So if you do have any areas that have done that, this is a great opportunity to cover that up a bit. Um, you don't, even if you're not necessarily going for perfect, you do want to, you know, just kind of create the image a bit, you know? And so yeah, just keep going and fill that in as you go. Try not to put too much because you want that purple to still be very prominent. Then once you finish with this part, we are going to be sitting and laying this dry for about 30 minutes to an hour or so. All right, after those 30 minutes, what we're going to do is we're just going to get that E6000 again, and we're going to create a little pool of that in the middle. Now, I like to work with little bits at a time because, as I stated previously, the E6000 does tend to dry kind of quickly and everything. So, you want to be mindful of that before you just pour it all out of the tube. From here, you see me um, just kind of adjusting my charms. Now, I pre place my charms on here so that way I know exactly where I want to put them. Um, from here, I'm just listen, lifting them up individually with the tweezers, and then I use my toothpick that I have here to apply a small little amount of glue, and then I just apply my little 3D charms that I do supply on my Etsy store, which I'll make sure is linked below for you, and it's also linked on my homepage as well. So make sure you go to my Etsy and search Courtney Shivante. Um, if you can't find my link, you should be able to find me on there. Literally nobody else has that name. It's my birth name. So, <laughs> But from there, I just went ahead and placed these charms on here. And I'm getting them on here in this pattern and whatnot. Working pretty quickly because... Um, you know, I just want to get them in place because this isn't what's going to officially secure them, secure them. So I'm not worried about just putting like a whole bunch of glue on there and making sure they're just like so perfectly um, placed and whatnot. I'm more so just wanting to get them in place and making sure they look good for the final product because they we still have a whole nother layer of resin to put on here. So I'm refilling that little pool of E6000 glue I was telling you about because I like to work in bits because that fast dryingness and everything. And it gets really annoying trying to drip into, I'm sorry, trying to dip into a dried pit of glue. It does not work. Alright, so this is my last little gold charm right here of the last 3d gold charms that one's a pair of lips that i have now what i'm going to do next is i have some purple rhinestones um that are in this cute little elliptical um pattern and i'm going to be adding these in just like little random places and everything using that pull of e6000 glue
the tool that I'm using to apply these with um, it makes it a lot easier to just like kind of stick everything in place it's a nail dotting tool um, I'm not exactly sure exactly which this one's called but if you search on Amazon I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it if I am able to find a link once I get my Amazon social account situated I'll be sure to post that for you so that way you can get one off there but I didn't get this particular one off of Amazon and I don't remember where I got it from just because I got it years ago so sorry about that but no worries they're super common I'll help you out But yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm just using that to put those in place. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This part takes a little bit. So bear with me, bear with me. It's almost over. Alright, now on this part I have these little gold embellishments that I have to add on here. And I accidentally recorded this in slow-mo so it looks really freaky like on here. I apologize about that but I sped it up for you the best I can. But I'm just adding like these little gold um, like little sticks on here. These gold little embellished sticks. And they just add a nice little pop and some extra dimension and color. Making my little blinged out C a little bit more interesting. Alright. So after we get all of that applied we're going to make sure all that is completely dry. From here we are going to be mixing up about 40 milliliters of our resin. We want to make sure that this is completely bubble free. So I'm going to be using a stir stick, a popsicle, <laughs> a popsicle stick to help apply this resin because I don't want the layer to be super thick and I don't want it to fall over too excessively, sort of like the color parts did. Um, I'm being more and um, I'm using more intent when I place this and everything um, so I'm just making sure it's nice and level because you don't want any dips in this and you want to make sure it's completely covered everywhere so that's what I'm doing just bringing this on around and this is going to be our final resin coat and this is what's going to seal in all of our charms and everything so that way we can get prepared to add some even more bling after this dries <laughs> Now before we go on, of course we got to spray with our alcohol spray and then we're just going to allow this to cure overnight. Alright, so after we let that cure overnight and everything, we made sure that it's nice and hard. So from here we are able to go ahead and start popping off those excess drippings off the back. Now remember that layer of liquid latex that I told y'all to put on there? I hope you did because it's going to make this a whole lot easier. You see how I'm able to just pop most of them off right with my nail? For what I don't want to like, you know, pop my nail off for, I grab just like a pair of pliers and I'm able to pull off what I'm not able to get with my finger. And I just kind of alternate between those two things and I'm able to, you know, just kind of get these off really easy. I actually did not speed this up much at all, so that's how you know I was able to move pretty fast. Alright, so once you get that off, it's kind of hard in some places, but you know, you'll, you'll get it. Alright, so 
so after you finish with that part you're going to take your toothpick and you're just going to create a little hole in that latex and you're going to pull it up so that way you can grab it and then from there you're just going to pull it on up try to grab as much as you can try not to break it it's pretty difficult to break it, it usually holds together pretty well but try to keep it intact so that way you can pull it all the way up from all the way off the back It's going to help you be able to get up a lot of those excess pieces that are still hanging on there. And it's going to make sure you get that completely clean. Now for this little large part in the back, um, you see me just kind of trying to get under it, under one side. It's kind of thin out because it's on top of one of my little doming blocks. Um, but I was able to, you know, still get that off fairly easy and everything. You see how once I got one side off... The rest of it just kind of popped off for me. So once we finish with that, what we're going to do next is we're just going to go ahead and grab our marker and our tape measure. Now you're going to see me mark in the middle first because I just want to know where my middle point is. But these marks that I mark in the permanent marker that I'm using those are the ones that I'm actually going to be putting my drill marks on and everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm just confirming that um, all my spaces are the same spaces apart. On here, I believe I measured one and one quarter inch between um, the two holes on the sides. Um, but between those two holes in the middle it was two and a half inches so double that it was a little hard for me to show this on camera so i'm fumbling a bit but i hope you guys can see what's going on here and i hope this part does make sense so i went ahead and i did erase that middle um hole and everything so that way it wouldn't be confusing when i showed you guys this part but I prepped my drill and from here I'm just going to go ahead and drill into these holes that I pre-marked. Alright, I had to make sure that was charged well. So once I got it back up together, I was able to go ahead and get those in very easy. This wood is super easy to drill through and to be honest, so is resin. Um, so after I get those holes filled in, I grab my eyelets. I'm using gold eyelets because I'm going to be using gold chain. And as you can see, gold is just kind of the theme that we got going on here screw those in using your pliers it's super simple um, once you get that hole in there they go in super super easy so just go ahead and insert those one into each hole be careful not to force them in there because the eyelets um, they can break and you don't want it to break off inside of your letter piece because I honestly do not know how you would get it out you may have to start over so <laughs> be careful all right make sure that all those are faced forward and everything and all the eyelets are straight from here, you are going to be taking a segment of your gold chain. You see me lining up two because I initially was going to use two different chains, but I ended up going just with one. So I'm just getting like a little piece of chain and I'm going to attach them onto the eyelets on the ends. I'm going to be attaching those using jump rings. Now jump rings are little circles that are used in jewelry. They are a type of jewelry finding that are easy to find um, at any basic craft store or online shop. Um, I'm just going to open those up using two sets of pliers and I'm going to um, attach it in there. 
after I unhook it and then hook it back once I got them both um, inside the jump chain. I'm jump ring. I'm sorry, the jump ring. Now, because I want to make sure that everything's even as I go, I'm going to actually go ahead and go to the other side, all the way on the other side, the other outer eyelet, and add that one in. That just makes it easier for me to measure out in the middle, as you're about to see. Now, if you do want to go through and like measure your chain more accurately, you are more than welcome. But I do eyeball it a bit um, because I've just been doing this for a bit. So it's pretty easy for me to just kind of see how much I need. So from here, I am just adding another jump ring onto um, one of these chains towards the middle. So that way I can add these middle eyelets on to the chain as well. And basically you just want to add them on into a pattern where you have three loops at the bottom and on that middle loop in the middle you want it to be slightly longer than the ones on the side not a whole lot just slightly and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a bit if you can't see it just yet Alright, so I'm opening up that jump ring and getting that last one closed and attached onto the eyelet. And then from there, that's what I'm talking about as far as that middle one just being slightly longer than those ones on the side. You can see how the ones on the side are about the same length as well. I went ahead and grabbed the charms that I chose and I pre-selected off camera. Um, but, you know, they came in a bag that I'll let, link below for you and you can definitely choose which style that you prefer. I went ahead and went up a size jump ring just because these charms are kind of big and they're kind of heavy. So I want to make sure that it could support it. And I'm just going to attach the charm with the jump ring onto the chain onto this letter wall hanging here. Similar to how I did the eyelets, I'm just going to be doing the same thing as if you're going to be doing it at the end of the loop onto the chain. So each of these three chain loops that we had created, I was showing you before, that's what we're going to be adding these charms at. All right, so it's time for the last step right here. So what I did was I went ahead and pre-marked where the holes are going to be. And then I am just taking that tiny little hand drill and I'm going to go ahead and drill into those holes slightly. From here, I'm grabbing my little um, metal wall hanging gear. I'm sorry, I have no idea what these are called and I threw the wrapper away. So I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to like kind of recover the name. But if I can, I most definitely will for you guys. But I just take my screwdriver and I go ahead and get the wall hanging and that tiny little screw and I screw that into place and get that um, kind of secured and everything. From there, I'm able to move on to the other side and do the same exact thing over there. So before I start, I went ahead and drilled a little bit more because I realized I could have used a little bit more whole space, but that's neither here or there. I go ahead and do that and get that finished on up. And then this is what we have our finished product. She is absolutely stunning, if I do say so myself. So here we have our blinged out 3D charms, which I said I do have available for you on my Etsy store. Some of these styles are available, not all, so make sure you do get what's available while you can. 
but I love how this gold foil peeks through on this purple and I love how these charms just sit through and they're just so randomized and they're just so customized to me I love how these charms at the bottom just hang here and it's just the sun the moon the stars everything that universe is and I just feel like it represents me so well if you do like this tutorial make sure that you do comment like subscribe thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys later Bye now.